That's a good sign. We got some light going on here. Let's turn this on here. Power to the Holly. Holly's turning on. Fuel pump on. We got a huge oil issue going on here. Welcome back to another episode of Teeth and Turbos. Getting the intake put back on today, and I am ready to start some preliminary electrical testing. So let's pull this battery switch. Two clicks. Two clicks. All right. That's a good sign. We got some light going on here. Let's turn this on here. Power to the Holly. Holly's turning on. Fuel pump. On. All right, let's be real. That was a little bit of a tease because I still need to get some plug wires on this thing. I need to get the cam sensor hooked up and the crank sensor, but then it should be ready to fire. So we are really close. Got everything back on. Oh, I need to get a belt put on too and Ty ran to grab one for Leroy. So he's picking the one up, but we are so close. Everything is back together. Just using a lot of zip ties to just button things up, you know? I found this promo code on the deep web for Motion Raceworks website. You enter it and Doug himself will come and install whatever you order. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to go look for it. That's a tough one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So pretty much everything's done here except for the cam and crank sensor. I have to, it's, it's wider now for 24 for the crank and 1X for the cam. And I need to switch it to 58X and 4X cam. We're getting the uh, steering rack put in for the Mustang. Let's see this old one. This thing is a total piece of crap. Look at this. Ugh. Look at how we uh, tried to hotwire it before. I mean, look at how much cleaner this steering rack is. Still have to weld some brackets to get it on the roll bar, but I mean, unbelievable how awesome that looks. Damn. This thing ain't going nowhere. That's way better. But on this cam sensor, uh, another Yurturb video showed me all I have to do is reverse the purple and the red wires and then change some settings in the Holly and that should be it for the cam sensor. The crank sensor, I need to switch out for a different plug. So still got to watch the Yurturb video to figure that one out as well. What do you think? Think I can do it? Sounds good to me. And then it should be ready to fire up. All right. Going for the... Oh, hold up. Going for the first startup. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we need more juice. Take number two. Needed a little more oomph from the battery. And then uh, the, ba yeah, the computer died. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's just the battery. Yep, hit it. Hey, fuel, pump fuel pump's got to turn on with the motor. It's, uh, you see it? Yeah, it's on the switch panel. We got a little ahead of ourselves there. There you go. week <laughs> coming back on well got it started but uh low oil pressure i did not put any o-rings on the bottom of the valley cover so james is thinking that's why we got oil pressure about 18 pounds and she was last the time it's raining had mid 15, 60 pounds of oil pressure out of idle. Yeah, that and uh, she was popping, so maybe some of these like coils are wired backwards. backwards. 
That's what we're thinking. Coil backwards and the O-rings underneath the valley cover. So we gotta pull the intake tight. Here's the deal. I get, we got the car started, but it was popping really bad. So first thing, coils were wired backwards on the passenger side, which is a super easy fix. But we were only running about 18 pounds of oil pressure. So the guy started asking me, did I put any O-rings on the bottom of the valley cover? And I didn't. I remember seeing the circles, but I never did anything about it. And so the, the oil flow is just fountaining out of the, of the motor. And so I got to pull the intake completely back off the car, pull the valley cover that I put in yesterday. So basically all the work I did yesterday to uh, get just a couple O-rings on. But at least it's an easy fix. Oil pressure is obviously a really big deal when you're running these big power motors. So going to pull it off now. Get the O-rings on, get her back together tomorrow, and hopefully that's it. About two minutes later, about as long as it took me to get this intake off, and valley cover, you can clearly see that each one of these does not have an O-ring. Right? Think that's it? That could do it. There it is. Okay. Get her back together, eh? Look at these thick boys. Go to your home. Sketch, dude. I'm gonna flip this over. One of them's gonna flip out of there down into the block. Let's give this the old flip over test. Oh, lost one. Shit. Yeah, it should, should, should be feeling right this time. Hey, fuel pump. boys and girls she runs but we got a huge oil issue going on here as you can see I've already started to clean it up but looking like it's coming from the rear main seal so gotta pull the trans brutal I thought we were there I thought that I was gonna have this next week to button up some odds and ends but now we got to dive back in, which is okay because we have a week and I have some time after work each day. So it's Friday where cars are definitely going to be on their way by next Friday and uh, kind of start tearing this thing apart and get it on the lift. We pulled the trans at one time in Pueblo as soon as we got to race week last uh, June or in June. And it took us just an hour or two. So. Let's hope I can get this thing out quick by myself. Take apart that rear main seal and see what's going on. And hopefully it's just uh, a gasket or something along those lines or a bolt that didn't get placed or something simple because uh, we're getting down to the wire again. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing on the lift. I moved Ruby over there and put it on the center lift and see what we got going. So just uh, to see where the oil is coming from, I turned the power on and turned it over a couple of times. It didn't actually start it, but just to force some oil through the system, build up some pressure, you can see there's oil dripping down the back of the rear cover, which means that uh, I need to pull the trans. So that's bad. That hurts a little bit, but it is what it is. And luckily we've got some time, so let's get this thing out. transmission out and uh, now I got to pull the flex plate off and that should give us good access to the block to see what's going on all right let's just get this flex plate off and let's keep moving here's the deal guys I pulled off the rear cover and the uh, rear seal and everything like that and it looked fine so what James and I are thinking is that this rear main seal folded over on itself against the crank 
So I pulled it off, got a bunch of new RTV down in here, new, new seal, new gasket, and got it belted back up and torqued it to the right spec. So I'm gonna wipe, get everything wiped down, put the flywheel and the starter back on and uh, see if we can't get her sealed up. It is time to see if the main rotor seal, rear seal is, it is time to see if what I did worked. Okay, let's turn her on. Fuel pump. <laughs> Need to increase the idle a little bit. Let's see if we're leaking any oil. It's not looking like we're leaking oil. Good sign. Good sign right there. It's uh, I turned it off because I couldn't see my oil pressure because I was on the wrong gauge screen. So let's get the right gauges on and then I'll start it up again. <clears throat> Okay, that should be good enough. Shoo, look at that. About two hours of total shop time. Got the whole freaking thing out. Rear main seal replaced. Everything bolted back up again. But I will be honest with you, I stripped out one of these oil pan bolts in the front cover and it was leaking just a little bit. So I don't really know until I start it up, but I ordered another one. We have a week, it'll be here on Monday. I'll probably end up replacing it, but I just wanna make sure that we're dialed this time for race week. We have the time to do it. It's not that much work. I really just have to pull off this uh, harmonic balancer and the water pump, which is fine because there's no water in it yet anyways. So getting there guys, getting there one step at a time. I do need to probably replace this starter and the wiring on it is a little shoddy. So probably gonna redo that since I have time as well and I have another starter sitting around because it makes this crazy whining noise when I start the car. And so it's a little frightening to me and everybody else that's around when I'm starting it. And I think it's because the starter that I have with the new flywheel the, the teeth don't match up purposely or they don't engage enough or they engage too far. So, I don't know. I'm gonna replace it, see what happens. Hopefully it works. All right, let's get this thing lowered down and give it a final start, make sure it's not leaking any oil. One stupid thing I did see when I uh, had the car running was I hooked up the trans line to the shifter wrong and so even though it's in neutral, it was actually in second gear so those wheels were spinning. So, I need to fix that real quick. Well. The motor's running, the trans is running, the uh, rear end fluid has changed. I have a lot of loose ends to button up over the next week. A lot of wiring stuff and little details. There's gonna be a ton of more episodes to come, especially on race week. I'll be trying to get up daily posts. Race week starts next Sunday and it goes for five days. It's Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and leave me a comment to follow along.